<laughs> so welcome, welcome everyone. Good morning or good afternoon, depending on where you may be. I am Nikki Acosta, your hostess, and we are here today with an awesome guest speaker for not just keeping the score, what great accounting can do for you. And so I would like to introduce the one and only Flavia De La Puente, Director of Operations at Skimmer, and our special guest, Matt McMitchin, CEO of Margin CFO. Matt, I'm going to let you introduce yourself. Perfect. Yes. Thank you so much. Uh, really excited to, to join you all today and, and, and talk about everyone's favorite topic, uh, accounting. Uh, so a little bit about myself, um, Matt McMitchin, and I'm the founder and CEO of Margin CFO and Bookkeeping. I'm a CPA, uh, and prior to starting Margin, I spent uh, a little over a decade in corporate finance and accounting, helping startups and small businesses grow and, and eventually exit their businesses. My goal when starting Margin was to take everything that I learned in that corporate setting and apply those concepts to help small businesses grow and, and do the same thing. And so the way that we do that specifically is by offering high quality bookkeeping services and fractional CFO services, because most small businesses would benefit, um, you know, greatly from, from those services, but typically don't need to hire a full-time bookkeeper or full-time CFO. And so then we provide them with high quality bookkeepers and CFOs on a fractional basis. It's awesome. And I love to see how many people actually RSVP for a webinar on accounting. It is <laughs> it is pretty awesome. It warms my heart. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Who knew? Who knew? It'd be such a draw. Uh, but it is important, uh, which is why we really wanted to talk about it. It's a, kind of the least sexy business topic, but you got to eat your vegetables too um, while you're building and pulling spa service empire. So uh, Matt just introduced himself. He's actually also um, based here in Austin, like the rest of Skimmer HQ. Um, and he's prepared a few slides for us. And Matt, I'll uh, I'll just take you to your first slide. Perfect. And real quick, just a, a couple housekeeping items. Oh, we always sure. get this question, will this be recorded? Yes, it will. And we will send it to you as soon as it's loaded and available on YouTube. If you'd like to ask a question, we are taking your questions in the Q&A. You can hover down at the bottom of your screen for that Q&A section and type your questions there and we will get to them. And with that, Matt McMitchin. All right. Uh, all right. So what is accounting? Uh, before we get too deep into the presentation, I, I, I wanted to start by kind of setting the stage and define what kind of accounting we're talking about, because, you know, frankly, everyone has a slightly different idea of what is meant by accounting. Most people, when they hear the word accounting, they think of tax. And while tax is certainly one branch of accounting, it's not what, you know, we're discussing today. And, and in my opinion, it's not even the most important aspect of accounting. Now, don't get me wrong, tax is absolutely an important uh, you know, piece, as, as everyone here I'm sure can attest to. But in terms of adding value to your business, there's really only so much you can do from a tax perspective to really move the needle. Mm -hmm. As the accounting that I'm talking about, financial reporting and strategic finance, it can be transformative when it's when it's done well. And so, you know, when we when we say accounting today, what we're talking about is is the bookkeeping process that captures and reconciles all of your financial transactions and then the financial analysis that takes place to analyze business performance and make decisions accordingly. And the, the big takeaway here, and if you hear me say one thing on today's call, then let it be this, the financial statements that come from your bookkeeping process are not just for your tax CPA or your banker. They serve a much, much higher purpose. And that purpose is, is ultimately to inform you as the business owner so that you can make real-time decisions and, and actually grow your business. Yeah, and I think we, uh, we named this webinar very intentionally, right? Like it's, this really isn't just scorekeeping. It's the insights that come from good measurement of the business, right, Matt? Absolutely. Yeah, that's that, that you nailed it on the head. Um, yeah, let's yeah, let's flip to, to this. So so with with that with that in, in mind, it's it's not just scorekeeping. It's not just preparing financial statements to ship off to our tax CPA once per year. It's it's something much more than that. Let's let's talk about why that's the case. 
So the first the first point is easy and and uh, and and it and it ultimately does tie back to what we were just talking about. So yeah, we're not talking about tax specifically, but one of the natural outcomes of good accounting is peace of mind when it comes to your tax return. So the the thought of having to scramble in the ninth inning to get everything accounted for and sent to your CPA so that your return can be filed on time is is really a nightmare for for most people. Not to mention the fear that you have of of getting the return wrong because your accounting was inaccurate. No one wants to worry about you know underreporting and then being at risk of an audit or having to pay penalties, or worse, overreporting and, and and therefore having to overpay in tax you know at year end. So there's there's absolutely you know a tremendous amount of value in knowing that your books are regularly updated and monitored by an experienced professional so that you can roll into tax season and simply hand your CPA the financial records that you trust. Um, accounting does give you that peace of mind, but in reality, that peace of mind is just the tip of the iceberg, right? The real value that you get from accounting comes into play when you when you then use that same data in your day-to-day -day process of running your business. So it's the financial insights that you gain from good accounting that really moves the needle. Um, and so that's, you know, that's the piece that I really want to, you know, to help, help people start to, to think of accounting in that way. It's not, it's not for tax. Yes, it checks that box. It gives me peace of mind. I can sleep at night knowing that my books are, are you know, in, in good shape. But the most critical, the most valuable piece of accounting really comes from the, the, the insights that come on a day-to-day -day basis from, you know, from that information that you can make critical decisions with. We can flip to the, to the next slide and, and start to unpack this a little bit more. Yeah. So when we talk about financial insights, I, I, I think of financial insights in, in two, you know, primary categories. The first category is going to be the current and, and historic. So these are the insights that you gain about past performance and the current health of your business. So good accounting will give you a very clear objective view into the current health and the performance of your business. It gives you information that you need to answer questions like, how am I doing? Am I profitable? Is this, mm -hmm. this service line profitable? How is that profit translating into cash flow? Can I pay my upcoming bills? Who still owes me money? You get the point. It, it's, it, it, it gives you the information you need to know. How am I doing today? How did last month go? Um, and, and, and really allow you to assess if you're on track for your, you know, for your goals for the year. At the yeah, end Matt, one of the webinars we did a couple months ago was uh, just about cash flow and the cash conversion cycle. And we actually did get into accounting metrics. Um, and the different insights that they can shed on the various parts of the cash conversion cycle. Are these the kinds of insights that you're providing customers on a monthly basis, right? You're, you're sitting on too much inventory. Your cash, cash collection could be optimized, right? Like really tactical, operational things that people can do about their business coming from the numbers. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You, or, you know, you're not, you're not billing as frequently as you should, or you're not collecting, mm -hmm. um, you know, you're, you're not collecting from your customers, uh, you know, as timely, or you're paying vendors sooner than you should, right? Like all yeah. of these things are, are things that you may, may or may not have some level of intuition about, but until you see it and you see the numbers kind of bear that fruit, it's, 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 you know, it's hard to really make any meaningful decisions go forward, right? And yeah. so it's, it's it's that kind of info that you get from good accounting. And again, if you're looking at your books once per year, it's too late, right? You 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 already missed out on so many opportunities to you know to optimize cash flow and 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 increase or improve performance throughout the year. Yeah, I I feel like the best metaphor for this is actually I'm probably about 10, 15 years late to the kind of digital health movement and the uh, Fitbits and um and uh and Apple watches. And it's like you know what you can you probably have an idea or an intuition of what you need to be doing better, right? Like 
don't have coffee after five o'clock or you're sleeping, your sleeping patterns are terrible or whatever. But until you actually see the data flashed back at you, for some people, for a lot of people, it's hard to actually effectuate the changes until you're like, oh boy, this, yeah, this number is going in the wrong direction and I need to stop having coffee after five o'clock. So, um, and, 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 and kind of piggybacking on that, it's, 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 it's interesting because you get that, you get that, that feedback and, 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 and that insight, and then you can make changes accordingly. And the great thing is, well, now you can, you can keep looking at, at the data to see, okay, well now how, how are those changes actually, uh, you know, making a difference, right? Is, is it working? All right. I, you know, I cut out coffee. Is it having the impact that I thought it was going to have? Yeah. An another, you know, another example that, you know, that comes to mind for me. So I, I, I'm a big runner and do, you know, uh, different races, half marathons and things like that. And, and, you know, with that, I mean, you, you know, you set out at the very beginning with a specific plan for, all right, I'm going to run X distance, whatever that future date race distance is. And, and I have a goal of running a, you know, certain pace. Yeah. It would be, it would be, you know, silly if I thought that I could go do that thing by just getting out and running, you know, uh, yeah. and, and not, and not tracking, you know, and, and not following a specific training plan and, and using a Garmin watch or, or whatever it is to, you know, track my distance and my pace and, and those things. Cause I'd have no idea how far I've been running, what I'm capable of, what is my current fitness level? Like, what is my pace? Like you, you don't have any of that feedback to help you know, get yourself ready along the way. And, and, and I think this is very similar to that. If you're, if you're trying to run and grow a business, yeah, you know, over the course of, of, of the years that you're doing that, if, if you're not looking at this stuff regularly, you have no immediate real-time feedback on what is my health? How yeah. am I doing? What can I correct going forward? And I, and I think the, the prioritization too is really critical because when you're getting started or if you're, you know, small ish or new or whatever, like in, there's, there's always a huge list of things that, you know, you can do to improve the business and work on the business and it's overwhelming. So when you've got 15, 20, 25 things, like, Oh, I could do all of these things and it would improve the business. I feel like the, the, the data, the accounting data and the insights that come from that are like, this is going to yield the most improvement. Actually, that thing, those three things, yeah, they would be nice, but, you know, they would be longer plays. They'll only, they'll only pay you back over the course of a year or two. Whereas these three things, if you did these three things today, the numbers would change and improve in, in 60 days, right? So it's like, Everybody knows there's plenty of stuff they can do to to improve their business, but like which things, how much um, is 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 that calibration? Maybe I don't need to stop drinking coffee after five o'clock at all. Maybe maybe I need to not have you know a cocktail. It's it was a, a priority there. Yeah, yeah, no, that's 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 exactly right. I mean, it's like driving it's like driving a car, right? It, it, yeah, you know, you have you have things that you're you're looking at, especially if you're, you know, trying to get to a destination you've never been to before, right? Like you need, we all now rely on, you know, a GPS. And and so, you know, that real-time data is, is an integral part of the journey. And without it, you're, you know, you might get there, but you're going to get there 10 times later than you thought, right? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so yeah, so that's, that's kind of the, the, so when we talk about financial insights, again, reframing this, that's the, the, the current and historic again, every single month, the goal is to, to have closed books that tell you, you know, you look at a balance sheet and it's like, this is the current health of my business. This is my, this is my, a trusted and true cash balance. This is where we ended the month in terms of, you know, money that we, that we have on hand. Here are the receivables we have. Here are, you know, the the things that we might have in inventory. Here are the payables we have. Like, what is the 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 health of the business as it stands today? What it what does our mm -hmm. look like? So on and so forth, right? And then also, 
how did we perform last month? What was our, you know, what was our net income? What was our our gross margin? And and not just gross margin overall, but you know, in in we have we have a number of of pool customers that we serve. And you know, one of the things that's really beneficial to them is is helping them look at the different the different kind of revenue streams in in a more granular detail. Mm. Right? It's not just hey, what is my gross margin overall? It's what is my gross margin for doing you know routine pool cleaning? What is yeah. my gross margin for the one off you know equipment fixes? Right. So it's like being able to get really in the details of that and understand how profitable this is relative to that is is really invaluable information. Yeah. The the moving on to the the second category is is going to be more forward looking, right? If the first one was where are we today, how have we been performing, the the second one, and this is where I really think you get the most value out of accounting, is focused on the future and strategic. So it's it's one thing to be able to look at your financial data, engage past performance, and the current health of your balance sheet. But that information can be somewhat useless if you don't then actually act on it, right? You don't actually change your course of action accordingly. And so in, a, in addition to answering questions like, where am I today and how did I do? You know, you now, through accounting, have the data to answer questions like, now what? What should I do next? Mm. From point A today, what levers can I pull to get to point B? And what yep. should I to improve performance or where can I double down? What is, here's this thing that, you know, we were trying out, it's working really well. Uh, I can see clearly the impact of, you know, investing dollars in this, you know, in this thing. Let's, let's double down on that and let's stop spending money over here because this thing's not working. Right. So it gives you the, the information that you can then, you know, apply it and make go forward strategy decisions. Yep. 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 Um, you know, one of the one of I, to kind of dig into that a little bit more. You know, as an example, you know, if if someone's goal is to grow their business by, you know, X percent in the next year, you know, you can sit down and 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 really think through what are all the potential drivers of that growth, and what are the financial ramifications of that growth. Okay, so what what are the things that we can do that will will help push that growth, and then if that growth happens. What are what are the downstream effects, right? So you know maybe one of those drivers is digital marketing. Like may, maybe maybe we get a, a a lot of business if we spend money on Google and Facebook ads and things like that. A, a question that you need to be able to to ask and answer is well, how much can I spend on digital marketing and get the ROI that I want so that that spend is actually beneficial, right? And it's not, it's not wasted, um, uh, you know, investment there. It's not investment at all. It's just burning cash. And it, but if that spend does work and you grow, okay, well, operationally, what, what will we need to do to support that growth? Are we going to need to hire a full-time employee? If I hire a full-time employee, what's the impact to my cash flow? What if we hire a 1099 contractor instead? What's, what's, what's that look like? Right? So you, you, you have this base and you have the information you need to then start asking strategic questions and and you can and you can model out different scenarios and say okay if X happens then here's here's what it looks like from an income standpoint and more importantly from a cash flow standpoint one thing I've seen most definitely in, in talking to a lot of really successful pros is something as simple as making the switch from a flat fee to charging for camps just because the chem prices, they fluctuate, you know, sometimes they're more expensive, sometimes they're less expensive, uh, but it's hard to, to wrap that into a all-in-one price and expect the same profitability when those prices are in flux. And so as a, as a short-term win, if you are not charging for chemicals, I'd highly recommend looking at doing a base plus chems model, at least in the short term. Only financial analysis to support it. Yeah, that's exactly where I was going to go. It's it, you know, it's one of those things where you could say, you know, intuitively, I know it's not working the way I'm doing it, and so here's here's an alternative. But but again, don't just act on gut, 
right? Like try to try to use the the, the financial data that you have to to model that out, um, and and to help inform what that you know what that charge should be. If you know if you adopt that model, well, well, still you need to figure out what what the right you know what the right price is to charge. And so you know how do you do that without without financial information? And a little later, we're, um, we're going to talk to Matt about you know, bookkeeping, accounting, strategic finance, you know, what level, you know, what person, you know, we don't want you to walk away from this webinar and be like, I, I don't know who to call, um, but we'll address that a little later and talking about the differences and how to understand what service, you know, each flavor of, um, of accounting insight is, is right for you at your business at which stage. Um, and we'll get to that in, in just a minute. Uh, but first, uh, you know, I, I met Matt on the on the website formerly known as, as Twitter. Um, and he's a fairly active uh, poster of insights. Um, and uh, here's a few uh, here's a few select select tweets or zeets, um, however they're being called today. But, uh, you know, Matt, you, you tweet a lot about cash. Um, and uh, I've got I've got two questions. Do you mean actual physical cash? Uh, and the second question, you know, you tweet a lot about this. What what do you really wish, uh, you know, small business owners, school and spa service professionals, uh, really of any flavor, uh, should know as it relates to cash and cash management? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. It I, I do. I, I, if it would be interesting to go back through my my post history and and calculate the percent of tweets that are cash, you know, uh, focused because you know, frankly, I mean, it's 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 cliche, but 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 really, cash is the lifeblood of your business. I mean, it's it's the it's the single most important aspect, um, and and despite that, you know, it 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 for some reason can can be neglected um and 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 you know the number one reason that businesses fail is because of cash flow issues and 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 the unfortunate truth is is that even good businesses even businesses that are providing you know a valuable service they fall prey to that and they, and, and still there there are you know countless occasions where businesses have to shut their door even though they were they were genuinely good businesses, and it's because they failed to appropriately manage their cash, and so um, so it's 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 definitely you know a topic that's that's uh, a bit of a passion point for me because because it's so critical, uh, and and so um, so yeah, I, I I tend to emphasize it a lot. Uh, to answer your first question. Uh, yeah, it's, you know, cash. I, I don't, I don't mean cold, hard, you know, cash. I mean, I, I mean, a combination of that and what's in your bank. I mean, ultimately when I say cash, what I'm talking about is, is the, the sum of all of the cash that you have, whether that's, you know, you're collecting cash in an envelope, uh, from, from customers that still pay by cash or, you know, payments are going into your bank account the sum of all of that physical cash and what's in your bank account like what is your true cash you know balance on on your balance sheet that's you know that's the cash that I'm talking about yeah um and I you know we're going to get in here into some considerations for pool and spa service professionals of, of all sizes um I, some of you with thousands of thirds service locations and you know, some who are just getting started with a with a few, um, but I think in in this industry, uh, there's a lot of folks who have been doing it for a while and would like to sell. There's some folks who get into it who are interested in building a pool and spa service business in order to sell. And you know, we have uh, we have some pros on the platform who are regularly just you know, building up uh, books of business to to sell. And these are all great strategies. It's a highly acquisitive industry. Um, and uh, you've mentioned, you put in this previous tweet here, uh, quality of financials is one of the biggest issues when owners look to exit their business, build with the end in mind. And, you know, we we did a, a webinar on uh, on basically, acquisitions and buying and selling pool, uh, pool routes. 
a, a couple months ago or a month ago. And you know, there's all kinds of things, your pricing, your relationships, timing, the economy matters, having tight, dense routes. But I, I think clean books, um, clean books are a must, right? Yeah. Look, it's, I mean, your, your financials are one of the first things that a prospective buyer is going to look at. Right. Yeah. It, and then when they go to, you know, to do a quality, a quality of earnings check, I mean, they're going to, they're going to essentially hold that up against, well, what are, you know, what are your tax returns show? And so it's, I mean, it's a very quick and immediate, uh, you know, view into the sophistication of, of your business and, and, and 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 the again, kind of one of the unfortunate things is, I mean, you can have an absolutely you know s- successful and amazing business, but if the first perception that a buyer gets from you know from messy financials that don't that don't tie and, and yep. don't reconcile back to bank statements and to your tax return, I mean, it it just it 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 already puts you know a a certain view on on your business and. And and you may still get through to the finish line, but you know I I I would be willing. Time kills deals. Matt's been a part of many deals. I will either kill that deal or or you'll walk away with less than you could have otherwise gotten. Yep. Because his perceptions, everything. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Um, I know you've been a part of quite a few transactions, and you know the difference between clean books and less clean books. I mean, it's a it's a negative signal. It slows things down, and uh, and uh, the the quote is, is "time kills deals." The longer it takes to get things together, buyers get frustrated, um, and uh, and will walk if uh, if things aren't easily intelligible. Because it's also a a transition issue. If I don't feel like I can step in and continue running the business, you know, I, I need to meet some customers, meet the employees, but as much as possible that is turnkey, you know, hopefully financials would be, would be a part of that and uh, ease anxiety about taking over. Uh, that's, that's absolutely right. Um, so, you know, we talked about financial insights uh, in, in, in earlier slides and about month to month, bookkeeping about forward-looking insights but as we know you know there's many flavors of a of a of accounting professional bookkeepers cpas cfos like yourself so you, know, you laid out here uh good better best um so if you could put a little more color around you know what is it and I'll, I'll just start with it with a question you know, you say a serviceable bookkeeper and clean books prepared in time for tax. You know, this person, this service, are you engaging with them monthly? Uh, you know, what's the substance of those conversations? What should you expect from a serviceable bookkeeper? And uh, and then and then just kind of working our way down uh, a little more, a little more color on what it actually looks like to to work with these kinds of professionals. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Look, the, so the the first one, good. I mean, this is this is the bare minimum. This is this is table stakes. It's blocking and tackling, and you know, it's it's the difference between scrambling at the end of the year, trying to catch everything up and put some semblance of financials together for your you know for your tax CPA, uh, versus you know being able to go into that with again financials that you already trust because they've been they've been kept by by someone who is you know it, it knows how to do bookkeeping right so that's like that's kind of the 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 thing that at a minimum you want in place um but but again kind of you know really going off of what we've been talking about all along that's 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 just the tip of the iceberg. There's so much more value that you get out of accounting. And so I would urge people to quickly move away from good and, and get into better. And, mm-hmm. and what better looks like is it's that same, you know, it's it's the same financial information. So someone is is doing the the books on a regular basis and you are actually looking at that data each and every month, right? So there's there's a cadence in in the accounting and financial reporting 
world that that really centers around the month end close. And mm. so every every single month, you know, you go through the period, you get to the end of the month, and your and your bookkeeper should come in and 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 close the books, which means they should they should take all of the financial activity and transactions that have happened over the course of that month, mm -hmm. categorize them in the appropriate places. They should reconcile your bank statement, your credit card statement, um, and, 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 and get everything tied out and then generate a set of financial statements for you to, to review and, and, and start to, you know, understand where am I today and how did I perform? So like, that's the, yeah, you know, that's the better, that's the, you know, kind of taking a step up toward, uh, you know, financial and accounting maturity. And, and a bookkeeper can can accomplish this, or would you say, you know, it's time to bring in a, a you know, a somebody higher caliber, a controller, or is a controller really more in, in best land? Yeah, so, yeah, so the, that, the answer to that question is is nuanced and it's, and it's gonna be specific to, uh, to, to, to the, to the business. So in a lot of cases, I mean, depending on the volume and complexity of your business, you can, you can generally do just fine having a bookkeeper doing the books, but, but yeah, when you want to start getting into actually unpacking and understanding, okay, all right, great. Now I have these financials that I'm looking at every month, but, but this is still a foreign language to me. How do I actually, mm. interpret it? how do I then, mm. you know, and based on that, that's when you start to engage, you know, somebody in a, in a fractional control or fractional CFO capacity to help you every month understand what you're looking at and make decisions accordingly. Um, you know, there, there are certainly cases where, you know, where, it, you know, if we're living in that better uh, scenario, yeah. where, where it might make sense to have, for example, like we, we staff all of our engagements with with a bookkeeper, a, a trained senior accountant, and and and, and generally a, a, a CPA controller as well. And that's and that's because at some point businesses will get to a level of complexity that it makes that you know a bookkeeper does a great job of kind of getting everything together, capturing it in the right place. But but they but they're you know the next step of really unpacking and understanding those numbers. You need you need somebody that's more trained in accounting and, and and not a lot of bookkeepers are. So does that does that make sense? I mean it's yeah, yeah, I think so. And and you know what? I I what I'll do is I'll go to the next slide here because I think this will put a little more more color on it. You know, we have customers ranging from obviously owner operators all the way to uh, uh to pool service companies that are servicing thousands. Um, but we've kind of, you know, identified these breakpoints is where, you know, you absolutely must, of course, have a bookkeeper at any one of these stages. But these are the general challenges and things that companies at these various stages are thinking about and talking about. And it it maps to, you know, if you're uh, if you're working on cash outlays for growth and you're in the neighborhood of several hundred pools, that's that's forward planning, right? That's strategic planning. And the decision of whether to hire up, buy more trucks, uh, you know, requires, I, I would I would argue, um, a more strategic financial vision. Um, and that that that's that's administrative investment, right? So you know. Matt, you've uh, worked with many flavor of, uh, of of companies and home services businesses, and you know, would you say that uh, you know, bookkeeper more than a bookkeeper, fractional fractional help is is about the trajectory that you want to be on for for accounting health and more importantly, insights. Yeah, no, I mean, that, I, I think that's that's spot on. Um, look at it; you kind of go from a, a a place in the early days you know, in, in, uh, under this one polar example where, you know, you know, if, if you're at least generally familiar with kind of finance and accounting, you can do back of the napkin math to answer some of the questions you're talking about, you know, in terms of, you know, do we need another truck and, and, and what do we need from a, you know, from a resource standpoint and things like that, you can, you, you can sort of use pretty rudimentary tools to, to help answer those questions 
but as you as you grow in in you know in volume and and doing that becomes a lot more challenging right and 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 again the cash implications of all these decision points becomes increasingly more important as you you know as you scale up right yeah. you might be knocking it out of the park in terms of of you know how well you're delivering the service and your and your business is growing accordingly mm-hmm. So now we want to go and invest in, you know, X, Y, and Z. And if you, if you make, you know, certain mistakes that the cash implications of those decisions can, can be incredibly damaging, right. And can set you back. And so being a little bit more sophisticated from a modeling standpoint becomes a really critical point. Yeah, absolutely. And again, that's that that cash conversion cycle that cuts across financial statements and, um, you know, those various ratios, Uh, you know, one of the ones that, that, you know, all businesses in this industry have struggled with in recent years is, uh, is, you know, managing, um, is managing inventory. You know, there were significant chemical shortages, which meant significant, significant hikes in chemical prices. Things are kind of softening now, but, um, you know, that challenge uh, has has persisted across all all businesses, um, and so a lot of the energy has moved towards accelerating collections or um, or collection cycles or other ways to improve the quality of cash flow. And those are the kinds of uh, insights, prioritization of insights that that are really great. Um, a better, uh, if you will, model, I think, I think can serve um, pool and spot professionals well. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I, kind of on that point, my mind immediately goes to it's, it's not uncommon in, in this industry to, to have a lot of cash outlays that are, you know, that are earlier in the cycle. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, you're, you're, you're buying supplies, you're, you're buying equipment. Um, you're, you know, if, if you have, employees or, or or contractors they're performing their job and you're paying their their payroll and and then you know if you're collecting after the fact after you've you know provided the service or or even you know you provide the service and then wait 30 60 90 days to collect i mean then you're already upside down in in terms of you know your cash conversion cycle right and so you know again like this sort of thing it you can you can probably feel it uh, but if you're not looking at the numbers to to really you know bear this stuff out, it's hard to put your finger on it and say what should I change to improve it. Yeah, absolutely. And I you know I have just a, a couple more slides here before we can open it up. But there's also uh, as you grow systems considerations, and you know we haven't really talked that much about about Skimmer uh, itself in in today's webinar and. Um, you know, there's a few things that happen as, as businesses grow, you know, at first it's just a one person show and then you bring on more people, uh, you know, as it relates to accounting and finance, there's this concept of separation of duties, right? The front of the business should be focused on work. Um, and you know, Matt's nodding his head, uh, but only people who really understand the books should be in the books. And that's something like accounting software, right? And access to those fairly sensitive environments should be limited. You know, people who are working on the business and servicing customers and scheduling things, you know, stay stay in those environments to the extent possible and uh, segregate accounting environments. Just there's any number of bad things that can happen uh, when, when we don't have clear separation of duties. Um, you know, automation, avoid double entry to the extent possible, you know, perform work, collect payment, do it once, do it expeditiously, uh, and, and look for opportunities to connect systems. You know, as you grow, things that are disconnected become a bottleneck, um, just like uh, having, you know, seven different forms of, of cash collection and invoicing can become a bottleneck. Uh, there's there's administrators who are um, whose 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 uh, lives could be significantly improved by simply saying you know what we accept two to three forms of payment and that's it um, 
And finally, you know, understanding these, these separate environments, there's, there's work management versus accounting, right? So Skimmer manages the work and can accelerate cash flow. These are inputs into the business, the work of servicing customers, getting paid, and accounting software, uh, you know, truly dedicated accounting software is about measuring that output where professionals like Matt can measure the output, you can measure the output and give you the insights, right, that then loop back around to, to the front of the business um, to make things better. So uh, all that being said, um, coming soon, we have a new QBO integration. Uh, QuickBooks is, you know, for better or worse, uh, the dominant accounting software of the small business world. Um, and with this new integration, we're going to be able to turn all work performed in Skimmer, uh, including, uh, including additional parts that are sold, including additional chemicals that are sold. Everything you do is, is beautifully ingested with our invoice generator. Uh, these invoices can then be reviewed, edited, paid, and sent to QBO for streamlined reconciliation. Uh, we are spending a lot, a lot, a lot of time working on it, and you'll be able to really spend more time working uh, on the business and, and less time in it, right? So you get to work on the front of the office. You get a fantastic bookkeeping and financial advisory service like uh, like Matt to, to help you uh, keep the score and, uh, and generate insights to improve your score. And, uh, and yeah, it's coming soon. We'll send more information about it following the following the webinar if you'd like a sneak preview to see whether or not it would work for you. And really the, the emphasis we wanna put here is working on the business. The work, quoting, billing and payment processing, collections, all that important cash work. Uh, I don't think Matt offers um, collections uh, collections work yet, of shaking down your customers who haven't paid you. And usual, usually, I've met a few. Uh, I've met a few women in the business who are interested with that specific responsibility. Um, but that's really the front office work, and and that's what we want to be. Uh, and environments like QuickBooks are for recording reconciliation, financial insights. It's kind of the vision we're trying to pursue here with, uh, with our new QBO integration. So with that, uh, if you have burning, burning accounting, financial insight questions, now is your chance. And you can use that Q&A box there at the bottom. We've already had a couple of folks ask for Matt's contact info. Woo! Hey, reach out. Happy to. Happy to <laughs> you know what? Here, we can put a... There we go. That's all of Matt's contact information. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll start with a question. Um, Matt, what are you seeing? Uh, you know, I, I know you work with both uh, kind of ultra high growth technology companies. And you also work with, uh, with business professionals like pool and spa services. What are the kinds of trending topics you're seeing these days um, among those businesses? What are the most recurring insights that you're feeding back to them to improve their business? Yeah, yeah, it's a great question. I mean, look, cash is 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 the biggest topic across the board, um, and and that that's probably not a surprise to anyone, especially in in the environment we're in, and and even for our you know the customers that have healthy you know cash balances, right? At you know, kind of one of the the tweets that showed earlier. There really is a spectrum when we talk about, you know, cash and, and specifically, you know, one of the things that we build on when we're doing, you know, fractional CFO services is a very robust cash forecast. And and everyone is on some spectrum of of a need for a cash forecast. So even even the businesses that are doing really well, the, the cash forecast is an, a helpful tool mm -hmm. for them to make decisions. But then the businesses who are are struggling from a cash standpoint, it's, you know, for them, it's a, it's an absolutely critical tool, right? So, so across, across all of our, our customer base, you know, cash flow is, is a, is a, is a major, is a major point and, and really digging into the drivers of that. So, you know, you might, you might show, you know, a, a really healthy net income number, mm. but then you go look at your, you know, your cash flow each month, it's, it's, 
you know, it's nowhere close to that net income number. Well, why? And there, and there can be a number of, of reasons why. And so, you know, we really help our, our customers understand what, what that why is and, and what they can do to, you know, to improve it. So that's, you know, yeah, that, that is absolutely the, the overwhelming, you know, favorite topic these days is cash. We have a question from John. He said, for someone just starting out, where should I begin? For someone just starting, uh, so I'm assuming then you mean just starting out with with getting the the accounting piece in place, but you you could mean someone just starting out, you know, building the business um, in general. And and I guess it, in in both cans, cases, I mean, the answer is going to be like I building the laying this foundation from an accounting and bookkeeping standpoint is is a in my mind a, a day one you know, or, or if not day one, as early to it as possible exercise. Uh, so there's, there's, there's no reason why you wouldn't, you know, start with, you know, signing up for QuickBooks online. You can go with their, you know, with their, their basic, uh, I think it's called essentials package, or, or there might even be a, a plan that's before essentials, but you can start with one of their lower tier, packages and and you know get quickbooks turned on get you know get your bank and and credit card if you have a credit card get those connected to quickbooks and then and then have a, someone in the bookkeeping seat and capacity to to go ahead and start getting your chart of accounts built and custom customized to your business capturing all that data start getting into that uh you know that muscle of closing the books each month putting yeah. together financial packages. And even if you're not, you know, familiar with, with, you know, finance and looking at financial statements, it, it just start, right? Like have somebody close the books, put together the financials and start looking at it and, and start asking questions. And if you have, if you have a good bookkeeper, they should be able to answer those questions and, and, and you can start to learn and really uh, you know, gain a lot of insights. And so, so all that said, I, I think the, the place to start is there. The, the place to start is to just start putting this stuff in place and then, mm -hmm. and then build from there. I mean, you have to, you have to start somewhere. And, and Aaron, I hope that answers your question as well. Aaron's question was, I'm in the process of purchasing equipment, chemical software, et cetera, to prepare for growth. What do you recommend accounting was for managing finances and preparing for tax season with no current revenue? And I think it's the same thing, right? Like, getting, you know, QuickBooks in place or some kind of accounting software, uh, getting your accounts created, uh, keeping a separate credit card for business transactions will probably help you quite a bit. Yeah. I would, I would say that's a, yeah. If you're, if you're just starting out, I mean, that's a, you have to, <laughs> you're, you're going to make your life easier. You're going to make your, you know, your, your bookkeeper's life easier. You're going to make your tax CPA's life easier. Get, you know, have a have a uh, a separate bank account set up for your business. Have a credit card, a separate credit card set up for your business. If you're if you're mingling personal with business in in one account, I mean you're already you're already creating uh, you know something that's really difficult to untangle and 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 really difficult to to draw insights from. Um, it, it's hard enough to draw insights from just looking at a bank balance in general. Well, how much did my, you know, how much did my balance grow or shrink this month relative to last month? There's only so much info that's going to tell you. But then if if it's already, if it's also mixed with personal, I mean, you're you're driving blind. And so, um, so I guess going back to the original question, yeah, the very very first thing I would do is is absolutely set up a separate account. And Matt, I think there may be plenty of people who have bookkeepers or are in the market for one. And, you know, it's November, uh, tax season is, is still a ways away. Uh, and, you know, we've, we've talked about financial insights, but part of it is peace of mind and making sure that you're ready for tax season. You know, what kind of expectations should people have if they're like, is my bookkeeper on top of it? Or am I going to just discover a hornet's nest a couple months from now? Like, should they expect a should 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 people be expecting a dry run from bookkeepers in the month of January? Uh, uh, you know, a check in. A like, what what does it look like to have somebody who is on top of it? Yeah, I mean, the easy answer there is if you're if 
if you don't if you don't know the answer to that question, then you have a bad bookkeeper because because you should be getting you should be getting closed financials on a monthly basis, even even from a a you know kind of standard basic bookkeeper or bookkeeping package. They should be doing your books month and now unless you engaged them specifically and said, hey. I, I, all I wanted is for quarterly or annual. Like if you came to me and asked, asked that, I, I honest, I would gently push back and say, we're going to close your books every month. Right. Because yeah. for all the reasons that we just talked about. So, um, so the way that, you know, is, you know, if, if you're not already hearing from your, you know, your bookkeeper on a regular basis, and they're not already closing your books each month and saying, Hey, here's, here's your, either here's your financial package or, Hey, you're, you can go get into QuickBooks and take a look. Your, you know, your financials are ready. Um, then I would, I would frankly get a little bit nervous that that it's not in good shape. And and maybe they're going to catch you up at the end of the year. But but then, I mean, think about their how hard their job is going to be to have to go back over the course of a year and and categorize all these transactions. And they're asking you questions about things that happened in January, and you're like. I don't know. That was January, right? So how how are they going to accurately capture that stuff? Like the that that's you know another reason this has to be pretty uh, pretty frequent in real time. Yeah, we we have a uh, quite a few other questions. I want to try to get through as many as possible, knowing that this next one might have a nuanced answer. Hello, as a small business, what would be a considerably good profit margin? <laughs> wow. Oh, do we have do we have another hour? Um, <laughs> I, I hate to, I really hate to give this, this answer, but it, but the, the honest answer is that it depends on so many different factors, right? It depends on like there, there are, you, we could, we could easily go do, you know, a, a search and say, what, what's, what's a benchmark profit margin for, you know, for a, a, a pool and spa professional service business. Right. And, and, and there's going to be, and, and even there, you, you know, you're going to get kind of a range of answers. Oh Yeah. But but I would I would then say look it, it you know if I was advising you on on that question my answer is really going to depend on on me then asking you well what is your what is your goal and what is your what is your you know one year three year five year goal right because if your goal is is high growth well right. then my answer might look a little bit different than you know then hey look I just I'm happy with where I'm at today That's I want to. I want to maximize cash flow. I want to maximize margin. Okay, well then your answer, then I'm I'm going to give you a different answer and, and a different playbook to get there. Then if if you want to just pour as much money as impossible into growth, does that make sense? Absolutely. I mean, in this industry, there's there's people who are very focused on just servicing as many customers as possible, and and that's their path, and they're just going to have likely or to have slimmer profit margins. And then there's people who are running you know, frankly, more boutique businesses um, that are delimited to, you know, 100, 150 service locations, but, you know, perhaps those are high net worth locations and profit margins are substantially higher, but they're like, you know, we don't, we don't plan to grow this. We're just enriching our profitability per, per customer, really. Um, so even benchmarking in this industry would be difficult. Yeah. yeah. All right. We have, we have a couple more, and I'm sorry to, to get us moving. We have three minutes left. Do it. Do you, Tony asked, do you think QBO is matured enough to be effective for forecasting? I tried QBO a few years ago, but went back to QB desktop because forecasting tools were so limited. Mm -hmm. Tony, real quick, just so you know, and for everyone else on the call, QuickBooks desktop has been end of life. They are no longer supporting it. If you call and you ask for help, they will not give you help. They are not rolling updates. They are not troubleshooting. They are not fixing bugs. Uh, so I would highly encourage you to, if you're still using QuickBooks Desktop, to not use QuickBooks Desktop anymore. It's all going to QBO. Uh, he wanted to know if the forecasting tools are limited and if they're reliable. Yeah, look, I, so so I will I will, you know, just echo what you said. Um, I, I I advise everyone to get off desktop. Um, QuickBooks Online is is one to your point. They're not the the servicing of desktop is is going away the support for it is 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 phasing out and so you're limited there but when you know as as Intuit continues to evolve and and innovate 
I mean, they're focused on doing it in the online setting. And so, you know, the, the enriching of their platform is happening there. And, and, and the forecasting tool is one example of, of them trying to be more sophisticated and, and check more boxes and provide more tool sets for business owners and, 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 and the accountants that use QuickBooks online. So, um, so I, I would, I would encourage you to look back towards QuickBooks online, whether you use their forecasting specific tool or not is, is a whole separate question. I, like when we, when we do forecasts for our customers, we, we build all, all of our forecasts bespoke, um, outside of QuickBooks. We'll, we'll build, you know, a very specific, robust financial model and forecast. And we don't, we don't use QuickBooks online for that. That's not a, a, you know, any, any indication on the quality of QuickBooks forecast tool. I just, we, we can customize and build something and control it. And so that's why I lean toward that. So I can't, I can't specifically opine on their forecasting tool, but I would either way encourage you to get an online away from desktop. Great response. That kind of ties into Dallas Dallin's question. What does the relationship look like to hire you as a fractional CFO? Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Uh, we, we have, we have different tiers of it, depending on where you're at um, and, and what your needs are. Uh, but the, the, I guess the long story short is you you get paired with with a a very seasoned finance uh, leader who's going to come in, understand your business inside and out, build a robust financial model for you, build a cash forecast for you, and then every single month that person is sitting down with you. Uh, depending on the 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 level that you engage us for, it's you know it's either twice a month, four times a month, or or even up to you know twice a week. So. Uh, so we're sitting down with our customers very frequently looking at, and this goes back to the financial insights. In, in some sessions, we're looking at how did you perform, where are you at today, and and and, and what are the implications? And then the other sessions are very forward focusing, focused. We're looking at the financial model. We're looking at the forecast. We're, we're modeling out different scenarios of if we invest in ABC, if we hire, if we do so on and so forth. And and then helping guide our customers in, in into those decisions. What a great service! We we enjoy it. Uh, this is this is exactly why we got into this business. I mean, I have a financial planner for a reason. I went to school for communications. <laughs> I leave the math to folks like you. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it, it look it, it, this. The reason we got into this business is because we genuinely care about small businesses and want to help them grow, and so everything that we do is centered around that. And we had some questions about billing ahead and some other questions about automatic invoicing. So here we go. There are some new scammer features we are working on. Super excited. Service texts are coming soon. So this will give you the ability to let your customers know or let have your text let your customers know when you were on the way, when you have finished service, or if the stop had to be skipped for whatever reason, that the skip was stopped. And this will be a text message sent to your customers that is configurable uh, inside of the Skimmer app for texts. Really great for those folks who have bad dogs, let's be honest. Uh, automatic invoices, set schedules to automatically generate and send invoices for recurring services. This has been a highly requested feature since we lost, uh, since we launched Skimmer Billing. And pretty soon, especially if you have customers that are just on a weekly or, or a monthly service that's regular service every month, it will take the uh, activity of you having to go in and trigger the invoice away. You can just automatically generate and send those invoices out for any kind of recurring service that you may do. You can still re review your work orders. We encourage you to review your work orders since those uh, tend to vary a little bit more, but for regular service, automatic sending, hopefully will save you a ton of time. And then we're adding readings and dosages for work orders. Another highly requested feature. We have a lot of folks who do pull closings, pull openings. They want to be able to track readings and dosages for pull startups. So we'll be able to incorporate those into your work orders so you have that recorded history. And then Flavia discussed our QBO integration, which we're hard at work. That's going to be pretty cool. We've got pretty granular um, uh, tracking of all kinds of things that we have not traditionally uh, synced with, with uh, QuickBooks. So hopefully you'll find some value there as well. If you are not using Skimmer, if you've been thinking about using Skimmer, 
let us know. We'll give you a demo. Call us uh, at our support line. Uh, we can get you set up with a demo. We have added a ton of new features and functionality over the past year, and we continue to do so. We have a pretty robust roadmap all the way into next year, and we listen to your feedback. Uh, one of the things that I love most of all when going to a trade show is hearing how great our support is and how great our training videos are and how we listen and take feedback and make Skimmer better every day. And so if you are still on the fence or if you're thinking about trying Skimmer, you can try it free for 30 days. If for whatever reason it doesn't work for you, just let us know. We will refund your money. But we have a, a team here that's ready to give you demos and teams here that are here to help you get set up. If you're acquiring a route from a Skimmer user, we have resources that can help you with that as well. If you are acquiring routes and you've got hundreds of uh, routes or customers to import, we have resources to help you out with that as well. All right, anything else? Woohoo for new features. We've got um, got some positive comments there. So thank you, Tony. We're hiring for that. engineers every day to build more and faster as fast as we can. We've got a team of over a dozen and, and growing. So uh, you've got a you've got a big team behind you. And if you'd like to get a hold of Matt or get a hold of us, next slide. Matt's info will be there at the bottom left. And then you can always ask questions to our sales or support team at those email addresses you see there. Matt, I wanna thank you so much for joining us today. I wanna to thank all of our attendees for making time in your day and we hope to see you at the next one. Everybody say bye. Bye, bye. thank you.